That was very good, Brian. Well done. So, hello and welcome to Tensile Ground Coffee. A few minutes on ground engineering to enjoy it while having your coffee. What did you know that there are radar satellites orbiting around the Earth measuring ground displacements with millimetric accuracy? So how is that possible, you ask? Satellites, say 800 kilometers above the Earth's surface, measuring millimeter level displacements. Well, that's what I'll try to explain in this episode. So Brian, over to the flip chart, and I'll try to explain. So imagine the Earth's surface. And we have a radar satellite here, making observations of the Earth's surface. Now, radar satellites are an active system. So as opposed to observing electromagnetic radiation reflected off the Earth's surface from the sun, this actually sends out the, radio, uh, the radar waves and measures uh, the signal that comes back, that is reflected back off the Earth's surface. So imagine we're looking uh, at uh, this point here. So in this image, uh, we get uh, the reflection of the radar wave that is sent out from the satellite and then is reflected back. Next time the satellite passes over, let's imagine that the ground surface has moved and there has been a displacement. So this time the radar wave that is reflected back will be slightly different and the satellite will detect a phase difference between the two reflected signals. And that phase difference represents the displacement there of the ground surface. So that is the principle of INSAR. So you could compare the two images and produce a differential interferogram to show the displacement between the two images uh, that has occurred between uh, when the two images were taken. And that gives you about centimetre level accuracy. That is useful for large displacements, such as due to an earthquake, large sudden displacements. And you might have seen the fringed contour plots of uh, a ground surface uh, giving the displacement caused by an earthquake. So how do they get down to millimetric uh, level accuracy? Well, then they use analysis techniques uh, using a time series of images, at least about 20 images in a row. So you're getting a lot more data and the analysis also checks the coherence of the data. So data of low coherence is discarded, leaving only the high quality data. So the combination of the higher quality and the greater volume of data allows you to get right down to millimetric accuracy. So what is the displacement that we are measuring exactly? What is the direction of the displacement? So to explain that, it's useful to know a bit about the orbit of the satellite. So these satellites are in a near polar orbit. So they keep going around the Earth, taking observations all the time. But while they're orbiting, of course, the Earth is uh, revolving. So it is possible to observe different parts of the Earth's surface as the satellite passes over. And in the case of Sentinel, it will pass over and observe exactly the same point every 12 days. But when it makes an observation in this direction called descending from north to south, uh, that has a slightly different geometry to when the satellite is observing the Earth in an ascending orbit from south to north. So it may observe a point uh, either in a descending or an ascending orbit. And in the case of Sentinel, then... Uh, it does one or the other every six days. So you'll get a descending orbit observation every 12 days and an ascending every 12 days in between. So you get an observation every six days. But what's the significance for displacement measurement of that? Well, let's look at uh, the Earth's surface from above and say we are observing um, a piece of land like that and uh, some point in there. So the satellite will observe that point either in an ascending orbit from south to north and it is observing towards the east. It doesn't look directly downwards, vertically downwards. 
it looks uh, to the east like that. At some angle between the vertical and the east-west uh, horizontal. Then, six days later, in the case of uh, Sentinel, it will pass by in a descending orbit from north to south. So now the satellite is looking in the opposite direction, like that. So each of these is, can give you the displacement in the line of sight direction. So if you're only using ascending data or descending data on their own, you will get displacements of that uh, point there in that line of sight direction. But of course, if you combine the results of the two, then you have displacement in two directions and you can resolve that into true vertical and east-west horizontal. So what is the spatial resolution of this data? In the case of Sentinel, which is free data, the pixel size is relatively large, about 13 meters square. So that's good for large buildings and large geotechnical structures such as um, embankments, cutting slopes, uh, large retaining walls and so on. But there is commercial data available, which of course you have to pay for, and that gets the spatial resolution right down to only about two or three meters. Okay, I hope that's given you a useful overview of uh, how we can uh, measure ground displacements using radar satellites. So that's all for this episode of Tensar Ground Coffee. Thanks for watching and see you next time.